so I was in Vegas for the Las Vegas Route 91 three-day music festival in October 2017 and it's also a time where I start celebrating being in remission from breast cancer. Uh, my 10-year remission mark was actually in October 2017 so they happen to be around the same time and that's you know, obviously a really special time, a very grateful time for me and my family. We were having a really great time that night. Uh, Jason was actually back in our room taking a break and I was with some girlfriends down there. Jason Aldean was the headliner that night, really looking forward to seeing him. He was definitely my favorite performer that day. And he was several songs into his set when we heard some loud noises go off. I think it was a confusing time. Some people thought it was fireworks, some people thought it was part of the show. Other people later would say that they knew it was gunfire. Um, I really wasn't sure what it was. I knew that it was unusual and loud. And I remember looking up at the sky, seeing if I saw anything, which I didn't. All of a sudden, I felt like I had been socked in the face. My face was on fire at the same time. It was excruciating, shocking pain. And at the same time, I started to hear the bullets and that's when everything kind of came into play in my head and I realized I had been shot in the face. I got a call from one of Natalie's girlfriends. She was hysterical. I couldn't really understand what she was saying and all I, all I could hear was Natalie was shot and then the phone went dead. All I could think about was Jason and getting to him and the stranger um, behind me stayed with me actually and I had this shirt of hers pressed to my face and we were on the ground on the ground staring at each other. And she said, do you want me to pray? And I said, yes, and she prayed. And she just kept telling me, we're gonna be okay. And I remember laying there thinking, I cannot have survived 10 years of being in remission of breast cancer and die at this country concert. Like, I just can't let that happen. If I have any control over tonight, I have to make it. There was a part of me that knew I was gonna be okay. I thought, I'm gonna get through this. And I think there was a naive part of me that thought that for everybody else there too. I wanted to think that this horrible thing was happening and people were gonna be hurt, but we were gonna be okay. Well, time progressed, they knew an ambulance was coming and that they were taking, um, they would be taking us to Sunrise Hospital. So at that point, I actually talked to Natalie for a couple of minutes. I could just tell there was something like physically wrong with, um, the way she was talking, it wasn't very clear. So I knew before I even saw her injuries, I knew that I wanted to get her home to Mission Hospital. I knew she would receive excellent care there. Um, from a medical standpoint, I knew that being at Mission Hospital would help her psychologically. And I knew that um, I wanted to get her home as soon as possible. They, I saw somebody out of the right corner of my eye being wheeled around the corner. They were covered in blood. I kind of recognized the clothes I kind of recognized Natalie's clothes, but I didn't recognize her face um, because it was so badly damaged. And she actually went past me, and as she went past me, I noticed um, a little braid that she made in her hair um, coming down the left side. And that's, that's, uh, at that time, that's how I knew it was her. I knew everything that had happened and then what had happened to me, and I knew when Jason got there. You know, I heard him and I felt him and I went to move and I couldn't move. I thought, Am I in a coma and they don't know that I'm in here and they can't hear me and I can't talk and I can't squeeze Jason's hand back? Like, I don't know if he knows that I'm here. I had a mix of emotions. I was happy that I found her, but I was also pretty scared because the injury looked pretty significant. It took a total of four days to get her stabilized. Um, I, of course, began the transfer process as soon as I got there. Um, I had doctors from Mission Hospital calling the ICU nurses station that next morning at seven o'clock. This man knows my heart. He knows what I need. And like, what a feeling to know that when you're incapacitated and can't make decisions for yourself, that the person that will be making them is making all the right ones and the ones that you would want to make for yourself when you can't communicate. At first I was, I had a small sense of relief as we were going in the emergency room. I felt the hugest sense of relief when we were actually in the ICU and I saw the four or five nurses. 
actually transfer Natalie from uh, the gurney she was on to Mission Hospital. Every time I woke up, the nurses were right there and they were telling me, Natalie, you're home. Natalie, you're at Mission Hospital, you're home. We got you, girl. You are here, you're home. Just orienting me to where I was. And I remember just being able to take a breath and be like, oh, okay. It made me feel like everything was gonna be okay. I had just been through the worst experience in my life. And yet I was surrounded by competent, phenomenal, quality, professional doctors and nurses and healthcare staff. And they were gonna make me whole again, and I knew that. An event like this puts you through a lot of different emotions. Um, it does make you realize how precious life is and how a split second can cause a whole chain of events um, that could take a very long time to repair. You know, Natalie got shot in the face, which took a second to happen, but repairing that is you know, going to take two years or so. Mission Hospital had really become my home in those 16 days and it had really like anchored me in a time when everything was so scary and uncertain. I knew when I came home that you know I wanted to take them with me, but they wouldn't go. So, so I knew that I'd have to come home and you know start getting well on my own in a certain sense. And they gave me the encouragement and Jason the encouragement to have that independence 